Hey guys, Terry Red here, and in this video, we are finally going to go through a tutorial of showing you how to add addressable LED effects and animations to a visual pinball table using my DUF config creator sheet, and I'm going to show you the other sources I use in that whole process. So we're going to go through it. You know, uh, I'm not going to show literally every single detail because, you know, that could be pretty lengthy, but we're going to go through most of it and show you how it's done. And then we're going to show the end result. And, uh, you know, uh, then you guys can learn from this and uh, apply that to your own tables for your own stuff. So if you look on the left side here, this is what we're going to start with. So this is using the standard RGB flasher and emulation. So in other words, all it's doing is showing the uh, five RGB flashers showing up on the back here. And the only other effects that you get are this uh, beacon effect and uh, the launch button effect that's down here. Everything else, like the, the slings, uh, the bumpers, and any other uh, things on the table are just showing up as the five flashers. So that's what you're going to get as standard on almost every type of uh, configuration for all the visual pinball tables by default. Because uh, the DOF config tool can automatically uh, map everything on your RGB flashers to the back here. So that's what we're starting with. So that's what we're trying to replace is that. Okay, so here, I'll just give it a second. So the end result is what we're going to have on the right side here. So we still have our beacon effect still, but we're going to have a different effect for everything on the sides, the back. So there you can see we got a launch button effect. And then we would fire the ball. You got a nice comet effect. The bumper blasts in the back. You're going to see a nice trail effects for the guide rails. And then there you saw an explosion effect for the Death Star when you hit it. And then every time you go through that rail, you get a nice little uh, smooth rail effect. And you'll get the same thing on the left side. Every time you hit the slings, you're going to get like a little rocket effect. And there you saw the purple one for the left rail. So, you know, just a whole bunch of simple effects for almost all the actions. But you're also, if you notice on the side here, you're getting flasher emulations. So instead of having everything just pop up here, you're actually having flashers show up positionally where they appear on the play field. So that, that's the whole point of see what, if you watch here, you can see some of that stuff appearing. So instead of having everything just all si simple, kind of, you know, boring and all that kind of stuff, we're, we're gonna we're gonna jazz it all up here. So that's what we're gonna be creating. Uh, now again, you know, there's a lot of things I use to do this. Uh, so the first thing you need is obviously my DUF config creator sheet. The second thing you're gonna want is the service manual for uh, for the real table. Uh, and then the third, and you can find that online, just Google it. And the third thing, obviously, you're gonna want is the actual table, a visual pinball, and you'll look through, be looking through the script. So those are the main sources I use. Oh, and as well as, of course, DUF config tool, the DUF that's already been added to the table by Arn Grimm or whoever else added it, because that's going to be definitely a great resource at some point, because sometimes you can't find things in the service manual easily, but Arn Grimm is the master and he knows how to find stuff much easier than pretty much anybody else. So you can use his stuff that's already on here as a reference to try to figure out what certain triggers you'll need for whatever actions or effects you're going to create. So having all those, uh, and the last final thing would be the service menu uh, in uh, uh, the game. So we're going to be using all those to help us to create our own addressable LED effects like I showed in that video on the right. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to make a copy of our template. So we're going to just duplicate that. And I'll just rename it so that way... You know, uh, we'll just uh, keep everything nice and organized. All right, so Star Wars, blah, blah, blah. There. there we go. And oh, yeah, of course. And I'm only doing uh, the addressable LEDs. That, that's MX means addressable LEDs, if you're not sure what that meant. So 
because the DOF has already been done, right? So there's no need to do all that. So what you can do is you can uh, rename this up here if you want. And oh, and before you actually start this process, I also recommend on my channel watching these four videos, the DOF config tool tour, the DOF and MX LED uh, table config basics, uh, the DOF config creator tour, and uh, uh, a video demo of uh, how to use a table template, which is what we're actually doing now in this video. All right, so uh, watch those first before you go through this whole process. So you can uh, change that, you can uh, change this stuff here. Basically, all of this can be changed to whatever you want. It's just text. Uh, but anything between this red line and the lower red line down here is what we'll be changing. Anything below this red line or above the red line cannot be added or removed from in terms of columns. I've mentioned that in my previous videos, but you know, I'm just a, a, a quick reference for you guys uh, so that you'll know uh, what you should or shouldn't be doing. So here uh, you can change this stuff if you want uh, to what, it, you know, it's just nice for organization and our ROM is STWR. All right, so STWR, all right. So the first thing you're going to want to do is figure out what you do and don't want. Now that's going to take some time, uh, it, depending on how well you know the table. Uh, so play your table, get to know it really well, and then we're going to go through the process. So we want to keep slingshots because uh, we're going to use effects for that. For bumpers, we definitely want to keep those, but we're also we also want to add another one. So what I do is I answer the row below. And then I'll copy and paste because we have four bumpers, right? So, and it's up to you whatever effect you want to use. But I'm going to use four here, and I'll I'll add the changes afterwards. We're just going to figure out what we do and don't want to have for actions first. So, uh, drain we'll we'll be keeping that. The uh, outer and inner rollover lanes uh, we'll be keeping those. So, if you're not sure what the Use for that, you can look at the man, uh, the manual if you want, or the table. So we have two uh, inner and outer roll, roll over lanes, so that's perfect for that. Uh, for the plunger lane, ball is ready to shoot. So that here, actually, I'm just going to do this. Uh, so what this is, uh, that's uh, basically when the ball is resting on this switch over here and it's ready to shoot. That's what that is. So we want to keep that. Ball launched, we, we want to keep that as well, because that's when the ball fires out. This doesn't have a plunger. It only has a an auto launcher. Uh, and then kickback, there is one on uh, the bottom left here as well for this table. Now, tilt and tilt warning, we can keep those, uh, because uh, if you look here uh, in the manual, this, this particular page is for uh, switches in uh, the table. You can see we have a, a plum tilt. And uh, we have a slam tilt. So we can try using those in the game to see if they'll work correctly. So we'll try keeping both of those for now. Uh, and one thing I will point out, you don't want to keep anything in here that you don't want. Uh, any extras or something, if you don't know if you need it or not, then don't keep it in. You can add stuff in afterwards, but don't keep extra stuff in. That's very important. All right, so for strobes, uh, the strobes, uh, we're going to be using those for sure. Uh, but I will say that most of that stuff's already been done for us. But we'll, we'll go through that. The beacon we'll be keeping. Uh, we'll be maybe adding a second one, depending on the table. Uh, now, our five flashers, we are not keeping those. Because the five flashers are what we're replacing with proper flashers on the left and right uh, side of the matrix. So we're getting rid of those. All right, and now the side ones here, for now, we'll just keep them here uh, because we may be making use of all these or some of them, it depends on the table. And for coin and start, this one here we can't use because uh, that's when you hit the start button and you don't have credits in. One thing you need to understand about ROM-based tables is we don't have control over the code. So all we can do is react 
to buttons, switches, solenoids, uh, and maybe flashers. That's it. We we can't react to events or you know timed parts of the game's code. We have no idea how, how any of that works, so we can't control any of that. Only on an original v visual pinball table or a f uh, future pinball table can you control any of that. So if it's an arcade ROM-based table, we can't do any of the, the advanced stuff. We can just react to triggers from visual pin main. That's it. Uh, coin inserted, uh, that actually, we could keep that, but uh, I can tell you right now that's already been taken care of uh, by normal DUF. So, uh, and ready to start a game, same thing. So we don't really, we're not going to be using those on a ROM-based game for the most part. Again, you can add stuff to the coin button if you want, uh, but again, we, some of that's already been added in. Now targets, uh, you, so you have ones for hitting the back hitting the left and hitting the right. So we're going to make use of those because we have targets on the left here, targets on the right, and targets in the middle kind of there. So we'll make use of those. <coughs> Excuse me. For ramps, well, we don't have ramps. Well, yeah, we actually, sorry, we do have a ramp on here. Uh, we do have one ramp kind of going to a right and then to a rail. So we can make use of that effect. Now on the left, we don't have a ramp, but we can still make use of the effect for this rail guide here. So we'll, we'll keep those. Now, for words, things like jackpot, extra ball, or ball locked, that's the kind of thing that, again, in a ROM-based table, we can't make use of because we don't have control over that. We don't have a way to trigger that specifically when it happens in the game. On an original table or a future pinball table, you'll, you'll see my videos, lots of that stuff. So understand your limitations with a ROM-based table. There's only so much you can do. So, again, that stuff we don't use. And same thing with modes. I uh, we I can't use any words like that as well, so I'm going to be removing those. All right, so we're only doing addressable LEDs, so all of the standard DOF stuff that's down here, uh, we're going to remove that as well. Now, again, what we're doing today, you can apply it to normal DOF as well in terms of how we're going to use this template. It's either or, a mixture of both, if you want. Now, you'll notice... All this stuff down here is complaining that, you know, it doesn't have a reference what the heck is going on. It's because we removed rows, multiple rows. And now, on the right side, our formulas are going to be messed up. Don't worry about that. As I mentioned in my uh, previous video, that will be taken care of when you're all done entering stuff and you're ready to copy your config to DOF config tool. We do that at the end before that process. So don't worry. Don't freak out. Uh, it's very easy to do. It's part, it's part of the whole process. So don't worry about that. We do that last. All right. So, so we have our basic stuff. We can add more stuff after the fact as we learn more. But we've got our basic stuff. So let's just start with this for now. All right. So we got our, our normal triggers up here. We've already got a bunch of effects pre-set up. So... All we got to do now is figure out what triggers we need. So uh, let me hear. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to resize this a little. So yeah, so we can see this a little better. All right. That's better. I like that. Good. Okay. So. All right. So for our left slingshots. Now, the things about slingshots and uh, bumpers is that they have switches and solenoids being used. So you have a choice of either or. Uh, it depends on which is easier for you to find. Now, in this case, we have, uh, and uh, this is, again, this is the manual, right? The service manual that you can download. So you have switches, lights, and solenoids that you can uh, find out stuff from, okay? So uh, let me see here. I lost my spot there. Uh, where were we? Sorry, guys. Uh, all right. So we have our switches. Yes. So we got switches on this page. And then we have lights or lamps on this page. And then you have uh, solenoids or flashers, which there's not... For this particular, like Data East on this one, they don't really tell you too many. They really don't. 
so some of these are kind of hard to figure out, and that's why you need uh, the service menu in the game or DOF config tool to help you out. So, uh, so for now, we're just going to use uh, switches for some of this stuff. So what you're going to look for then is we need our left and right slings. So we got our left is 43 and our right is 44. So because it's a switch, and I'll point out, if you're not sure what to use for a switch, you go up here, trigger equals device. So switches are going to be W in the number, all right? Lights are going to be L in the number. Solenoids and maybe flashers, depending on the, on the manufacturer, will be S in the number. All right. So keep that in mind. So in this case, we have W W uh, forty three and W forty four. All right. So that's our switch for that. Uh, for our bumpers, you can see we have forty five, forty six, forty seven, and forty eight. So We'll do that. And this particular, uh, the bumper center, that was that bumper blast effect I showed you in the video. That basically means that every time any of these bumpers fire off, this effect will also fire off. And that's what having them all on this line means. So what you need to do is you need to put them all on here for, this, for the, the trigger, but you uh, separate it with a pipe. So we just do that. So it'll be that. All right. So no, I'm not sure if capitals actually matter or not, to be honest, guys. I always just put them in. All right. So drain for our drained. So for that one, uh, that that might be a little trickier to figure out. And that's where DOF config tool will help you out. Because uh normally you would have a, a uh a switch down here or a kicker switch as well. And you got to figure out which one it is. So I'm not totally sure which one we're going to use for that. Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll figure that out afterwards in a DOF config tool. Uh, so we'll come back to that one. Now our, our rollover lanes, those are easy. So you've got these switches here. So for our outer left, it's 24. For our outer right, yep, for, is 21. For our inner left is 23 and 22. All right, so our plunger uh, ball is ready to shoot. That's our switch down here in the plunger lane. I th I'm not sure if that's 14. I think it is. Yes. Shooter lane is 14, so that's what we'll use for that. So what that means is when a ball is resting on that switch, that will give you whatever effect you want by the ball. It's also what triggers uh, your launch ball button. Uh, so ball is launched. So that's the auto plunger. Now that's one that, uh, again, normally, depending on the manufacturer, these are easy to find. But I will tell you right now, because I've done this ahead of time, uh, the Data East ones do not list them very nicely at all. Uh, you've got your left and right slingshot, your your bumpers, uh, and your flippers, but they don't really list nicely in nice numbers that we actually can use with DOF Config Tool uh, what we need. Like they have 3L. Well, we can't use that in DOF Config Tool or, or 1L or, you know what I mean? So I'm not sure if it's Solenoid 3 or Solenoid 1 uh, or Solenoid 2. I don't know for sure. But that's where uh, you can use uh, the DOF config tool config that's already there as a reference. So we, we, again, I'll, I'll do that later on and I'll show you uh, what I get the, for the value. So we'll do that after. And same for the kickback. I'm not sure what the solenoid is for that one. And that's normally the one that's in the bottom left for this particular uh, table. And yeah, so that's normally uh, the one that's down here. All right, so tilt, tilt and tilt warning. So we have uh, slam tilt for seven. Again, I don't know if that actually does anything, but I, I, I'll just enter it anyway. And then uh, we have our tilt bob, which is uh, switch one, actually, ironically. So we'll use that. So that's when you nudge the table too hard, that's what the warning will do. And it, it'll give a, uh, an effect for that. And 
Maybe the slam tilt will work. Maybe it won't. I, I don't know for sure. Now, strobes, I will tell you ahead of time, they've already been entered and set up for us in DOF config tools, so we don't need to even bother entering anything in for that. So I'll just tell you straight up, uh, we don't really need to bother with that. So I'm just going to remove those. The beacon, uh, again, we're using DOF config tool to fit for uh, what he already entered in there for that. But you can use the beacon for anything you want. Like you can use it for uh, when you nudge the table or when uh, when uh, the GI lights go on or off, like flicker, that kind of thing. And I think that's what Iron Grim uh, used for his config. So uh, we'll, we'll, I'll show you how to do that. Again, from DOF config tool is where we'll get that. Now, our five character flashers. Oh, we're not using those either, by the way. The character flashers are if you use uh, letters to emulate your uh, five flashers, but we're not using those either. So we'll remove that. All right. So our side flashers, again, those are a little tricky on this particular table to find because, as we saw, they don't really tell us a whole lot. They have these all listed here, and you can see them here, but we can't use these numbers because they don't. They're not the same kind of numbers that pin mame will use. So again, uh, we'll figure that out from the UF config tool. Now the targets, we can go back to here. Where are we here? So our switches. All right, so for targets. So we have our back one, our back middle. So for this one, we have two targets that would do the same thing as what we're gonna do, the 26 and 27. So that's what we'll do like we did before. So W26 and W27, we'll use that for uh, the, the effect we already have. For the left, we've got 25 here. And for the right, we've got 28 and 29. So we can do that for both of those as well. Okay, so now... Uh, hopefully you guys have been paying attention to what the toys are. So this is this means that it's going to be an effect on the right matrix, on the left matrix, and on the back matrix. Again, this template's already been set up for a lot of this stuff for you. All you're doing is changing the trigger and then eventually the color for what you want. And it's really that simple, guys. It really, really is. So for our ramps, now our right one, we could see the switch is switch 39. So that one's pretty easy. So, W39. Now, you'll notice we, we uh, have to use the same switch for both of these because this is an effect that uses both the back matrix and the right matrix together. The one would just be delayed a little later to start than the other so that we have, a, you know, like a, a continuous effect from one to the other. So the, you gotta pay attention to uh, how the triggers are being used. Now on the left side, we do have a switch here, but I can tell you we don't wanna use that. The reason why is that is for when the ball rests inside there, not for when the ball gets kicked out. So we'll have to figure out what the solenoid is in there that kicks the ball out into this rail guide. So again, we'll come back to that later. So, all right, so we've got, the basic ones replace this for what we know so far. So what else do we not know? Uh, well, we know the Death Star has a switch, so we want to add another line in for that. So that's going to be switch 40, right? But we need an effect. So let's look for one. So we're going to go to our MX Effects tab, and then we're going to look for Explosion. So let's look for Explosion. There it is right there. So. We just do a copy of the whole row and we go back to our Star Wars sheet and then we're just going to paste it right in there. Okay. And then all you got to do is add our switch in there. Switch 40. Look at that. That's all we had to do to make every time we hit the Death Star, create an explosion. That's all you had to do. You didn't have to know how to program anything whatsoever. So that's what I'm trying to emphasize with how quick and easy this sheet can be compared to trying to f do this stuff manually like I've always had to until I got to a point where I got this all 
collected up and nicely arranged and mastered and all that. And that's why I'm trying to share this with you guys so that you can do this cool stuff quick and easy without going through the hard, hard way of doing things. So, all right. So we got our Death Star effect. Uh, we got our ramps uh, in there. Uh, is there anything else we want for uh, Switch? So what's 38? So R2-D2, uh, no, we don't want that when it's going in. We'll use that as a solenoid. So I think that's all the major stuff that we want. We just have to figure out how to find the other values. So, all right. So now that we've got as much as we can, we have to then just change our color. So, I mean, I'm going to make the, the slings blue. And our bumpers, I'll make them red, yellow, and white. And red again. And in the bumper center, I'll make red because that's what the bumpers are on the real table. So the drained, I always, the uh, drained left and right, I always leave those as red. Uh, our outer lane, same thing. I always leave those as red. Because the idea is if you're in the outer lane, your ball's most likely going to drain. So I just, I, that's what I personally like to do. Our inner lane, whatever you want to do. You know, like if there's a, a light insert of a certain color, maybe you want to have that match. But again, you guys can change this up to whatever you want. So ball is ready to shoot. So uh, we have a couple effects in there. Uh, I'm just going to use red and blue as a color. Because uh, this is an example where it has two colors used for the effect. All you got to do is change the colors, right? If, the, if there's a blank, don't enter anything because it won't be used. All right, guys? And you don't need to change the times because that's already been set up for the effect. So our ball being launched. Okay, so... We can use uh, the effect that's already there, but I want to add uh, the, the comet type effect to that that you saw in the video. So we're going to look for that. Sparkly comet, bottom to top on the right side. So here we go. So I'm going to copy that and add that in to our uh, auto launcher. Okay. And we'll just go auto launcher like this. Yeah. Okay, and again, I don't know what the trigger is yet. We have to figure it out, but let's make this red. Oh, see, I entered a, 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 a color that was not existing. All right, so we got red. Okay, so our kickback, same thing, same idea. We already have one here, so we'll use that one. And uh, yeah, we'll keep it orange. Why not? Okay, so now I'll point out, you can copy an entire row for an effect, or if you've already got the right toy, uh, you, what you can do is you can go to the effect, and instead of copying everything, you can always just copy only this part here, not this over here, just up to the template. You can copy that up, up to here if you want, or you can just copy just this right here, this little part right here. The template cell and then you can copy that and paste that uh, where are we yeah into there and, and paste that you can do that if you want because this is the actual command right here and then this command is what's making use of these fields over here these guys over these fields here right and then it'll make the command on this side so, again, if you watch my previous videos, you'll understand how this template works, right? So that's why it's important that you guys should have watched that. All right, so we've got our auto launcher, our kickback, our tilt warding and all that. We don't need to change. That's still going to be red. Uh, our beacon, uh, well, we're going to have a couple of those. I, I, I know ahead of time we have a couple of those uh, to use. And I think, yeah, it was cyan, if I do believe, originally. Uh, yeah, we'll figure out what the actual trigger is for the other one afterwards. All right, so our side flashers, uh, we're going to have to figure that out over time. Uh, we'll, we'll get back to that afterwards. Uh, our targets back, uh, we'll make those yellow. And same thing with the sides, because that's what they actually are. Uh, on the table. Our ramps, uh, I don't know. Uh, sure, we'll make it yellow again. 
For our right, and you want those to match, obviously. For our left, uh, we'll make that like a magenta or something. And our explosion, we'll, le we'll leave it as our nice orange explosion. So, all right. So now that we have all that, most of that is done. I don't know if we're going to add anything more. Uh, all right. So at this point, now that we've got as much done as we can, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to DOF config tool. And what we're going to do is, first and foremost, I'm going to explain that. I'll zoom in if this will maybe help a little. All right, so what we're going to be doing is, we're going to be, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the left effects. Well, first, first things first, uh, I got to refresh this page because it's going to time out. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. If you don't do anything for a while on DOF config tool, it times out. So keep that in mind. Uh, sometimes if you enter a bunch of stuff and you haven't saved or done anything for a long time, it might time out on you and you have to refresh it all over again. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the uh, left. I, hold on, make sure that was the right one, right? Hold on. Yeah, that was, okay. Sorry. All right. We're, first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the left flashers altogether. We're not using those. We're replacing them completely. Uh, the right flashers, same thing. Again, we're only dealing with the MX, right? Because that's addressable LEDs. Uh, right effects, we're replacing all of those, so we can get rid of those. And same with left effects, actually, too. Now, the back flashers and the back effects. So the back effects, we are replacing those. The only thing they really had was... Uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me. The only thing it had was the strobe effects. So we're replacing those anyway, so that's not a problem. The strobe, the addressable LED strobe, we'll leave alone because those are already perfectly matched. Uh, the way Iron Grim does that is, uh, if you look at the strobe up here, it's just all the same stuff he's already got under the normal strobe. And what he does is he usually puts the strobe on every time a, a solenoid kicker or a vuck uh, kicks a ball out, you know, and that's usually what I do too. So the strobes, if there's already in there, leave them alone. You don't need to touch those. They're, they're usually very good to go. So our back flashers. Now, we are not, I repeat, not going to completely get rid of these. But we are going to select them all. And we're going to cut them out and put them into a notepad. Up. Because the reason why is because we need these for reference to figure stuff out. We are replacing them in uh, our DOF config tool here. But uh, we are uh, not going to get rid of them completely. That's why we put them on Notepad so that we can use them as a reference in case we don't know what a certain solenoid is or what a certain RGB flasher is or whatever. It's a great, great, great resource because he's already done all the work of taking all the RGB flashers. You know, so that way, if you're trying to figure out what what it is on the real table, well then. He's already done the work for you, and that's what we're doing here. So what we do now is we take all these and we separate them. These are all the, the individual uh, RGB flasher commands. So we go like that, and we just do that for each and every one. And you're going to use these to try to narrow down what each solenoid or switch is activating so you notice they're all s right so that could be a flasher on the table or it could be a solenoid on the table that he's using to create an effect like for the bumper or the slingshot right so this is what i do i i, I do this and i keep this as a reference until i'm completely done updating the table properly. And one way or another, you don't have to worry because all of this stuff is still, you know, no matter what you do on the addressable LEDs, all of that stuff is still in the, the normal flashers. So one way or another, you do have them for reference. I just like to do this because it's kind of quick and easy for me. So, all right. So now that we have those as a reference, we can use those. Here, I'll throw that over here. Over here, 
So now what you have to do is go through the process of figuring out what flasher is what and how you're going to use it. So one way of doing that is by going into the actual uh, table and running it using the service menu. So we're we're going to we're going to try doing some of that. And I'm not going I'm not going to show you the whole process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you how to get the service menu, show you how you can test the individual flashers on there, and then what you can do is you could then use that to narrow down what you need for your side flashers. The side flashers, the left and right ones, those are if I remember correctly, uh yeah. So those are going are going to be how much do you If you're watching the sides here, the flashers that appear on the side. I'm just trying to see if I can. Okay, well, it was there for a sec. Ah, okay, there you go. So here's a side flasher, all right? There's actually a flasher on the table lighting up right now. So what I did was I positioned this flasher to appear roughly where that one is. And there's another one up here, another one here. So I have three positioned flashers all on the side. And the same thing on this side. There's a flasher that comes up here, another one here, another one here. So instead of having just everything appear there, we're going to actually have them appear where they are on the play field. And what that does is it clears up the back for all your effects and animations. And you're not getting duplicated effects. So that way you've got still got all the flashers showing up, but then you got all your effects showing up and it's way more clean and it looks way cooler. I That's the whole advantage of having these side strips is that you could do s not just animated effects, but also positioned real flashers. And you can have them positioned back here as well, which if you watched in the final product, I actually did do that. Like see this one up here, you know? So this is all part of what we're, we're trying to create. All right, guys, so. So that's what we're gonna try doing by playing the table. Uh, so let's just try that real quick. All right, so you, you bring up the table. Now you have to get into the service menu. Uh, every manufacturer is a little different, so it's a little, it's a little tricky. So for this one, I'm trying to remember if, I, if I'm doing this right. Ah, I did mess it up. All right, hold on. <laughs> Let's see if I can get to restart properly Maybe. again. Okay, there we go. So I want diagnostics. So you have to use the buttons, the service menu buttons to get to wherever you want. So what I want to do is I want to keep going until I get to the individual tests. So you can do a switch test if you want. And then what you can do is you can use the ball roller to drag the ball around to try to test the individual switches if you want. But that's I, I'm not, I don't need to do that. So the, see, these are lamps. So we're not using any lamps for triggering addressable LEDs. You normally don't want to do that because they are very unpredictable and they will fire off something at the wrong time. So I never, almost ever use lamps to trigger anything. All right, so the, now these are the flashers. These are what we're trying to mimic. So you can see there's one here, one here, one here, another one here, another one here, and another one up here. And there might even be a couple in the back there. So what you could do is... Now th this is an auto test. You don't want that. So you want to go to... Now you'll notice it says coil test. That's because flashers tend to also be coils uh, that are being turned on or off. Probably because they're a high powered uh, light. That's probably my guess. So now what you can do is you can cycle to each one and trigger it yourself. So see, I'm triggering this one myself manually. You can see that this, this one does all three, but I don't know what that number is. So that's why we have these here. So we'll use what Arngrim figured out and we narrow it down one at a time with these S numbers. You'll go through and figure out one at a time. So you'll add 
in here, whatever you think it might be. And you'll just, you'll enter them in, you'll test it on the table, and you'll narrow it down. It's not fun, it's not easy, but you know, sometimes that's what you gotta do. So, there's another one. So these are all, uh, keep in mind, this is not just the flashers, it's also the solenoid as well, right? So there's another flasher right there. So we got that one up there. So that's the, the coil buck. Again, now, for example, that's this guy right here, the one that launches the ball into this real guy. So you can figure out, hope oh, these numbers are terrible. They, again, don't help us. So again, you can use that uh, by going onto DLF config tool. And you can go on to what he did for the bumpers. So you can use those numbers to try to narrow down which one it is for that buck, that vertical up kicker. So that way we can use that to make another effect on the rail when that, when that triggers. So again, you know, lots of candy stuff. So drop targets. So you got another flasher there. got another one there and then you got our two cycling there so that's another one so that's another solenoid we might we might be able to use so we can do a little effect for whatever he shakes up and down right now this is the gener this is the gi relay so what this does is it turns the gi on and off and i can tell you what he does he tends to assign us a, a brief uh beacon effect to that so that when they turn on or off that it'll it'll just turn the beacon on and off briefly so again that, these are all very handy tests that you can go through and that's it so that's just a, a demonstration of how you can try to use that service menu so that when you copy your configs over you try it in your cabinet you can use that menu to test everything instead of playing it and doing it the hard way so Again, I'm not going to go through that whole process right here in front of you guys. That's just a long, it's a long process to figure out what your triggers are. If you have all the triggers for everything, then doing this is very quick. But because we don't have all the triggers, you got to go through the process uh, and, and go to your cab and figure out what is what. So, oh, excuse me. So, so I'm not going to show you how I'm doing that because I'm going to show you after the fact what they are. It's just way too many, way too many things for you guys. And you guys don't want to watch this whole process of doing all that. So I'm going to, I'm going to basically have the video come back to after I'm done adding everything in. So you guys can see what I have in the end and I can show you, uh, you know, how it also works in the end. So, all right. So give me a moment and we'll come back with all that stuff ready to go. Okay, guys. So we're we're back. Uh, so now I, I do have a, a a complete sheet with everything added in, ready to go with all the effects. Uh, but before I show you that sheet, I wanted to show you the in between process uh, that I mentioned before. So notice how we're seeing a whole bunch of messed up stuff on the green section. The green section is what assembles all of our commands at the bottom of the sheet down here. So if you watch the videos to understand how this template works, everything between the red cells right here, that's what we enter our information in. Only in these cells here, all right? We don't enter any information down here or anything up here except for, you know, the text that we did here. We don't enter anything on the right. These are the actual DOF commands that are being created by the information we enter here and then all those commands are assembled down here but you notice it's not working right now well the last thing you need to do when you've entered all your commands and you're ready to test on duf config tool you have to go to this top formula line it's even uh described to you here as uh, the formula line this one here you have to go up there and we select the first green cell and we select all of them, all the green cells, all the way to the right. And we choose copy. And then what we do is we select all the cells underneath of that. 
all the way down to the bottom line in the bottom green cell. So the last line down here, we select all the cells, including this line, every single one of them, and we paste formula only. So what we're doing is we're paste we're copying the formula for the th from the top green line and we're pasting it to everything underneath down to the bottom green one. So that's what we're going to do. And then now look what happens after we've done that. Now everything's all nice. So what it's done is it's taking all these commands here and it's putting them in the column for, that has the correct toy of where they belong. And then what it does is it takes everything from each toy and assembles them all down into this bottom cell for each one. And that is what you'll find down here under the completed commands. This is what we want in the end, is what you find here in this section. So these are our assembled complete commands that we copy into DOF config tool here. All right. So that's the final step you do before you copy everything over. And you see, it, it, it's very simple and it works. So anytime you add or insert a new row, or sorry, a new, yeah, a new row, or delete one, then that's going to mess up our formulas over here. So you'll need to copy and paste like I just showed you. But that's why I wait till the very end when I'm ready to finally start testing. Uh, so just remember that you have to do that each time you add or remove a row. Very important. Even if you think it looks good, you still have to do that. Now, once you've added or removed your columns or, or your rows, I mean, and you've entered, you know, your information, if you want to go back and change a trigger or change a color, that's fine. You don't have to go through the whole copy and paste. You'll just go down here and then uh, copy from here into DOF config tool up here. And we're gonna go through that and I'm gonna show you that. So now that you guys have seen that, now we can go to our actual filled out complete one that I've already made up for you guys. So this is a complete one with everything ready to go. So I'm gonna explain some of what you're gonna see here. Now you'll see I've got solenoids in here. We The switches that we used, those work fine. But I just decided to use the solenoids uh, because I was able to figure that out through the service menu through all the testing. Uh, that's I was able to figure that out. And also you can see that in, for some of it in DOF config tool. You can see for the slingshots, he used those. For the flippers, you can narrow that down. Sometimes they get used for multiple things. Uh, and for the drain, you can see solenoid one. So I was able to figure that out uh, through testing. Uh, and through some of what he had on here. Now, our other rollovers, those are all the same still. Uh, ball is ready to shoot was good. So the ball auto launcher, uh, through testing, I figured out that was solenoid three. Again, you know, I just used the values he had in here already. And was it three in there? I can't remember if there was three in there or not. It was in there somewhere. It was one of these. Yeah, it was uh, the flipper one. That's right. So it was one of the flipper solenoids that was used for that. And same with the kickback. Uh, that was a left flipper that was used for that. Our tilts were good. Okay, so the beacon. Here's a good one. So what I did for the beacon is I, or I just used what he entered. So look here. Very simple. Uh, under the beacon. He's only got two entries, two configs, or two commands, I mean. So I just used this one uh, as a reference for down here, all right? So that I used S11 for that with the, the beacon effect that was already there. And now this one here is a very good example. This is actually another trigger. It's only a trigger for a completely different command. What this means is when W switch 42 is on, and when switch 11 is off, then it will trigger the beacon to turn on as well. And so that's what I did here. I entered another beacon line with the exact same effect, but the difference here was I changed the trigger to that condition, because you can do that in brackets. You can put multiple conditions in of other triggers. So you can have a lamp or a, a solenoid or a switch all combined if you want, or multiple of each, whatever you want, and have that 
activate an effect. So that's what he did there. And, uh, you know, that was pretty smart stuff. So now our side ones and our back flashers. So I do have a couple of back flashers. I do have some on the left and some on the right. So that's, uh, I, I let's see if I got it here. Oh, not that one there. Uh, where are we here? Ah, not that one. Sorry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, this one here. Okay, so those ones are our uh, side flasher effects. Ah, sorry. All right. So that, that's the guys you see on the side here. So what those are, there are there's already a few that are pre-defined uh, for you guys. So what I did was... Uh, come on. Okay. Well, <laughs> geez. Let's see if we can get one more come up. No? Okay. Well, whatever. Uh, what I did was I assigned... Ah. All right. So I signed... Uh, All right, good, good example. There's actually three on the right side. There's one here, another one in here, and another one in here. So what I did was I basically assigned three flashers, and I didn't know what solenoids to use, so I basically went through and just tried entering a different number for each one into, into uh, each one of those. And then I went to the tester, the service menu tester, and then I just used that to trigger each one of them, and then... A couple of them were switched around, so that's all I had to know, and I just used that to figure out what solenoid numbers to use. Now, in some some of them, there was one where it has, and it's hard to see, there's actually three, two on the left and one on the right, that are all triggered by the same single trigger. Uh, I, I showed that to you guys earlier. So I basically used the service menu to have all these guys go off with whatever solenoid numbers I could find from what Arngrim used, and then I just used that to narrow it down, and then that that's, it really wasn't that hard. You know, I just used the numbers with whatever flashers I wanted to add in, and then I just narrowed it down and rearranged them as they needed to be. And then, after that, I changed the details of where the position they are in the, the actual uh, command template. Now, if you're not sure what any of this mumbo-jumbo is here, well, that's when you guys have to go to this website here and figure out what all that stuff is. That's what this page is telling you. It's telling you what the parameters are and what the matrix, the LED, uh, addressable LED commands are. So for example, this stuff here is your position and your height uh, for how big the effect is. So this would be a position, would be where it starts, and then the width and the, or the height would be the size. So in the case of shoot, so in the case of this one, our position starts here. Our height, because it's uh, our uh, left and right matrix, is this portion, and our width. Well, we only have one uh, LED wide for those anyway, so you always just choose a hundred. Whereas here, it's the opposite. The width is what you're seeing here, but the height is going to be what you're seeing here. So remember, a matrix here is the same as a matrix here. They're basically the same thing. The only difference is this one is only one wide, whereas this one is many wide. This one is, is, is a, a bunch high. This one is a lot high. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at uh, what these commands are. You're basically choosing the position, the width, and the height of the effect in here. And then your trigger, and then your time, or your color, or whatever else is in here. So look at these, and then look at here to figure out what they are, so that way you can change these to what you want. So for these flashers, that's what I had to do. I just had to change their positioning and their size a little bit, so that way they would be, you know, either down here or up here, or, you know, positioned better, instead of just taking... The default number that I had in there. Okay, so uh, it's easier when you go through the process. Now, once the flashers were set up, then what I also did was in the right side here. I know you can't quite see it, but there's a, a shoot in there. So, and there's another shoot over here for the force. Now, what I originally had was a light on the side that would come on every time that light came on. 
that became very annoying very quickly because then that light could stay on throughout the whole game, depending on if you haven't drained a ball, and it became really annoying. So what you do is you have it where whenever the ball goes inside the chute, it's pushing down on the switch. So then you just have it so that when that switch is pushed down, then your light will come on. So that way, when it kicks the ball back out, the light goes off. So that's an instance where, you know, I'm not using a light to emulate a light. I'm using a switch to emulate a light at a, a, a better time to make use of it. I hope that makes more sense. When you play the game, you'll understand it a lot better. So that's what the Force and Java's Bounty was for those scoops. Uh, for R2-D2 Shake here, so that was basically the same solenoid that Erngrim used for the shaker, uh, for when R2-D2 is shaking up and down here. Like, you know, when he goes up and down, uh, then we have a, a, a blue, a rotating blue effect in the back there uh, for, for him. And you can see a little bit, a little bit of it there. So what else do we got there? And uh, our targets, those were all pretty much how we described them. Uh, so when I when I hit the yellow targets here, you have an effect up there. When I hit the targets here, you'll have a little bit of a splash here, but, as well as flashers, and the same thing for the target on the left side here as well. I don't know if we're going to see any of those get hit right away or anytime soon. Okay, well, and there you go. There you go. You saw both of them right there. So. So you saw the Death Star get hit with the explosion, and you saw the back uh, one get hit. And you see our ramps now. I was able to figure out what the solenoid was uh, based on that vertical up kicker that was right here. And uh, the ramp turned out perfect for uh, the switch trigger. So uh, as you can see, most of the stuff was good to go on the first shot. It was just a matter of narrowing down some of the other ones. Uh, and that, that takes more time than anything else. So. That was it. Like everything is ready to go based on all, all of everything that you're seeing here. So just to point out uh, the strobes again, I, I just left what he had. So now I'm going to show you that I'm going to copy and paste it all onto here to use. Uh, that video was made ahead of time. So uh, don't think anything about that. So now that we have all our commands in there and they're ready to go, and we did our copy and paste of the formulas correctly as the last thing we do. So now what we're going to do is we're going to copy all of our configs over. Oh, <laughs> that's my, that's my nightly reminder to go pick up my wife from work normally, but she didn't have to work tonight. So ignore that. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually take this DOF config tool tab and drag it over here. All right. So, what we do is we're going to copy and paste. So I'm going to make this a little smaller so you guys can see it easier. All right. So what we do is we just go to our left effects, copy, and we go into our left effects and we paste. Then we go into our right effects, we copy, and then we find our right effects and we paste. Back effects. Go to right there. Now, as I may have mentioned before, effects only are used in effects. Flashers are only used as flashers. So the flashers should only have emulated flashers on the table, the positional flashers that you're trying to emulate. If you want effects to go off when certain flashers go off, that's fine, but you have them in the effects toy. It's important to keep them separate. You, it, that's a very, very important thing to follow. Just trust me on this. Uh, in the long run, it's the much better way of doing things. So I've copied the left flashers over. Now I'll copy the right flashers over. And then we have our back flashers, which there weren't too many, but there were a couple. And that's it. And you'll notice the strobe was left alone. Now remember, uh, beacon effects, the beacon toy has not actually been used on any table. 
for whatever reason, that's always been the case. I think it's because of the combo. Uh, the combos, you can only have four uh, toys in one combo, and maybe that's the reason why. I don't know. So don't use the beacon toy. Just whatever beacon effects you have, uh, use them on the, the back effects. So you'll see that's what I, I've done on mine uh, right here. All right. So those are all copied over. So when you're done that, you're going to want to save. Ah, okay. See what happened there? <laughs> this is what I was talking about. It, say, it said that it was saved, right? Well, it actually didn't save it because I took too long. This was sitting idle for a long time. So watch, what's, watch what happens. <laughs> so you can see it timed out. So it's actually good I showed you this. So I'm just going to go to the Star Wars config, and you'll see that none of, none of the stuff I, I did there uh, was actually uh, saved. So see? So I took too long to get that process done. So so I'm glad I showed you that because you guys may get frustrated if you see that happen. So so just, yeah, if you're, if you're working with stuff, just make sure you save regularly so that way it goes quick and you don't have to worry about losing all, all your stuff. So luckily... Because we're using this sheet, we haven't lost anything. We could just copy and paste it again. Uh, all right. So as you can see here, this actually does not take long at all. So that's left. Uh, oh, I screwed up. Ah. All right. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Our left effects go in there. Uh, don't mind me. It's been a long night. All right, so left, back. Okay, good. Let's just make sure I got the right ones. All right, so we'll get our flashers in there. Oh, I did it again. Oh, my God. Hold on. All right, so now we're going to do this the right way. Okay, right flashers and back flashers. All right, so there we go. <laughs> all right, so now we're up to date. We have them all in there. They're ready to go. So now I'll save. And then there you go. And then when you're done adding everything, you'll generate your file. Wait patiently while it does it because it can take a, you know, like half a minute or sometimes for that to happen. So while that's going, uh, I'm just going to uh, point out that if you make tests and you don't like what you've seen for a certain color or, you know, uh, a certain effect, as long as you don't remove or add any rows, like complete rows, if you're just going to make a change to uh, a color, a trigger or a color, any change will be reflected in the bottom. Like, uh, th you know, if you, if you make a change to a color here, it'll automatically change down here or a trigger. You know, that's the whole beauty of this. You don't have to go through the whole process over and over and over again. You can make quick changes and you do have to copy and paste it over again. Unfortunately, there's, there's like no way around that. But, uh, so then, you would uh, go to the uh, config tool, or sorry, uh, your uh, DUF config file folder, and then you'll just copy and paste everything over. Oh, shoot, sorry. Nope, I accidentally hit skip. All right, so you're going to replace the files, and there you go. And then you'll go to your table. You'll have to make sure everything's closed, like, you know, VP, there's nothing open with DUF, you know, and then launch it and then test it and then and then therefore uh if everything winds up being good it, it'll turn out nice and beautiful and uh you know it probably will not the first time the second time or the third time you know uh you'll have to make changes for certain things sometimes you you don't want to have everything have an effect or an animation it might be too much like this table gets pretty flashy you know so each person has their own taste. Uh, you may not want something as as uh, flashy as what I'm showing you here. So try everything out. See what you like. Try only a couple things at a time if you have to. 
to make it easier to, to follow at first. But don't be afraid to try different effects or try different things. Just because I do things a certain way doesn't mean, you know, you'll like the same thing. So try some stuff out. Just remember, it's a ROM, ba it's a ROM table. So that means you won't have control over everything like I would have done with a, a future pinball table or, uh, you know, or Stranger Things, Stranger Edition. If you look at my future pinball avatar effects versus my visual pinball avatar effects, the visual pinball ones don't even come close to what I was able to do with future pinball because future pinball is completely script based, no ROMs versus visual pinball, which is using the ROM. So I want you guys to understand the big difference and the limitation with using a ROM versus uh, an original table or a future pinball table. So just keep that in mind, guys. Uh, and I think, I think that's everything really uh, I can teach you guys. Uh, I hope that covered everything. There's a lot that we went through in this video, but in the end, uh, I, I hope you guys uh, can find this sheet useful and you can use it to create some cool stuff for your favorite tables and maybe be able to share some of it with the community. So uh, give her a try, record some stuff and videos to let me see and then, you know, and uh, uh, let's, let's see what you guys can create. So uh, keep up the good work and uh, let's have some fun with pinball. So watch out for more videos. Uh, see you later. Bye.